Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Black Chapel. This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you all, but I'm going to be glad and I'm going to rejoice in this day. This day that wasn't promised to any of us, but we are here by his mercy and by his grace. Let us stand, please, if you will. Our choir has already made their entrance in here, and we are going to bless this great God of ours. Is he worthy of our blessing? Amen. Is he worthy of all the praise? Yes. Is he worthy of all the glory and all the honor? Yes. I believe he is. I know he is. Yes, indeed. Hopefully everyone has, everyone has a program. We're going to read our responsive reading, which is found in Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 20 through to 25, and we'll find these words. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. All together, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep step with the Spirit, my Lord. Amen. What a fellowship is our congregation of him this morning. And to fellowship with this great God of ours as we learn in our Sunday school lesson this morning, you have to come in compliance with Christ. You have to come in because if you come in any other way other than the doorway of Christ, you become a murderer, a liar, a thief, and a robber. And nothing of that kind will inherit the kingdom of God. So this, this song, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine, are you really leaning on the everlasting arms of this great God of ours? Let's sing this song as if we are. Fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arms. Yes, no, yes, I am. So near, 
See, when God is with you and he's around you and he's near, you don't have anything to dread or to fear. Not your bills, not your this, not your that. No sickness, no nothing. You don't have anything to dread. Good morning, Black Chapel. You know, Reverend Thompson just said what I was thinking just oh, oh so well. You know, when we think about the song we just sang, What a Fellowship, Amen. it's filled with words of encouragement for us. Amen. You know, it just lets us know, it reminds us that because we are in the fellowship that we're in with the Lord, yeah. there's always hope. Mm -hmm. You know, from day to day, we face different situations. We face new challenges, things that we have to deal with. We have no idea that's coming our way. Yes, sir. But regardless, because of our fellowship, because of our relationship with the Lord, we know that we already have the victory. Yeah. The victory is already ours because we serve an all-knowing, all-powerful God yes, that loves us. Yeah. And he's going to lead, guide, and care for us and order our steps. Yes, and our challenge is just to follow those steps as he's ordered them. Yes, Let's go to the Lord uh, in prayer. Amen. Our Father, we just like to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, oh so much, Lord, just for another opportunity to come into your presence, Lord. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to worship and praise your holy name, Lord. Lord God, this is a new day that you've granted us, new opportunities, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that you just continue to touch our hearts, that you continue to prick our hearts, Lord, so that we will continue to keep that desire, Lord, to work for you, Lord. We pray that we just continue to keep that desire, Lord, to do things as you would have us to do it, Lord. Lord, we know sometimes that flesh swells up inside us and we want to do things our own way, Lord. But we know the outcome of that. Lord, God, you are the source of our power. You are the source of our strength, Lord. And just help us to keep that at the forefront of our thoughts, Lord, as we move in and out day after day through our tasks, Lord. Lord, we also pray this morning, Lord, that you just continue to bless this ministry, Lord, that you lead God and order the steps of our, our pastor, Lord, and all our church leaders, Lord, and, and our church members, Lord. Lord, again, just remind us, Lord, that this is all of our ministry, Lord. Each of us have been called and assigned to do a task for you, Lord. Lord, in Sunday school this morning, we heard uh, one of our members tell us I remind us, Lord, that the fields are white, but labors are few. There's a task for each and every one of us in your ministry, Lord. Lord God, we also pray, Lord, for our city, for our country, Lord, for our state, Lord, for all those leaders, Lord. Again, just remind us, Lord, of who you are and that there's a right way to do things, Lord, that we need to do things as you laid out for us, Lord. Lord, and this morning, finally, Lord, again, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for a new day. Thank you for a new opportunity. Thank you for one more chance, Lord, just to get it right. Lord, these and all blessings, we pray for in our son Jesus' name. Amen. This concludes our devotion for this morning.
case you don't know, just because, just because, just because, just because, just because of who he is and what he's done, just because. My Lord. For all he's done for you and me. Redeemed. How many of you have been redeemed? He set you free. And guess what? If he did that for you and tell you, you ought to act like it. Act like you know he did. Just because. Just because. He. I don't know about you, but he's my God. Is he your God? Just because. Just because. Just because. Just because. And for all that he's done for you and me. All that he's done. Not nobody else, not nothing else, no one else, but him because of what he's done. We just want to thank our choir for just, for just reverberating that to us. Because, you know, sometimes you, th you think you, you, you if you know, the, know this song like I know it, you won't hear it again, but you know God always has a ram in the bush. It's a signature song of ours, and look, just look at what has happened. He gets the glory out of this. He, he constantly will remind us of who he is. And see, when you know who he is, those of you, our visitors, and, and, and others that are viewing us by way of the Internet, we know who this great God of ours is. And just because, just because, just because, just because, and for all that he's done. See, I don't know what he's done for you, but I know what he's done for me. I know what he constantly does for me, for little old me. And do I deserve him doing what he does for me? No, I don't, but guess what? I thank him that he does what he does for me. You may not have a hearty thank you or praise in your, your body or, or whatever in your locale, but I'm here to tell you, all he wants from you is a hearty thank you. Remember the, the, the ten lepers that were healed? Only one of them came back. Jesus looked at that one and he said, were there not ten of you? then where are the nine? Yeah. To our visitors, we greet you in the precious name of this great God of ours. And we thank God for him. And at this time, you, you, you may be wondering what's going on or what, what is happening to these churches. And I know the enemy is playing with a lot of people's minds and their hearts, but I want you to know God is still on the throne. Yeah. It doesn't matter what's happening out there. In today's chapter of your life, God is still in charge. He's still in control. And he still deserves all the praise and all the glory. We love you with the love of God. We thank God for you. And there may be some of you that, that are in here. Your name is not on Black Chapel's Road, but you're here visiting with us. If you don't mind standing, we just want to acknowledge your presence because we realize you could have been anywhere, but you chose to be here this morning. And we thank God for you. We certainly thank God for you. Yes, we do. We love you with the love that only God can give us. Yes, we do. Yes. Love the Lord. Thank you.
And whatever you do, pray much for us and with us and just allow God to have his way. And I know something is going to be said, something's going to be done here today. And at a later time, our pastor is going to come and he's going to give introduction to you as well to let you know that we do love you with the love of this great God of ours. And at this time, we have Sister Love with our announcements. We certainly thank God for her being back in the house as well and Brother Love. Good morning again, Black's Chapel. Good morning. Our announcements are as follows. The Black's Chapel Baptist Church family is cordially asked you to pray for and support the Restoration Conference 2022. More information will come to you at the end of the announcements in the form of an infomercial. The Great General Missionary Baptist State Convention, July 17th through the 23rd, is scheduled the inauguration of Reverend Reginald Buckley at 6 p.m. at the Thalia Myra Hall on Pascagoula Street. The admission is free. Registration opens Monday, July 18th at 7 a.m. The opening session is 9 to 10 a.m. Greater Pearly Grove Church on West County Line Road in Jackson, Mississippi. If you're interested in attending the convention or have any questions, please see Dr. Lucille Brown at 601-672-7356 before Monday, July 18th. Thank you. Amen. Our prayer list, we have A.D. Smith, that's the brother of Patricia, Mother Patricia Walker. We have Brother Cleveland Bingham, Donald and Lucini Bennett, that's the brother of Deacon Daniel Bennett. We have Deacon Charles and Sister Madeline Bell, Tyler Pfizer, the nephew of Mother Wyndham and Deacon Melvin Pfizer. We have Brother Turner Curry, Joshua Henderson, and Sister Jessie Bell Williams, that's the mother of Curtis Watson. It's being prayer for all our members that we are aware of and those that we are unaware of. Amen. We have birthdays. For last week, we had uh, Nicole Ross on July 11th. On July 12th, Sister Veranda Love. On the 13th, we had Michael Shorter. On the 15th, we had Sister Margaret Davis. And we also had anniversaries on last week. We had Reverend James and Evangelist Tammy Cole. Amen. Happy anniversary. Amen. And also Mother Curry and Turner Curry. Anniversaries on July 11th. Amen. This week, our birthdays for the week through the 23rd, we have on July 18th, Kingston Marshall. On the 21st, we have Stephen Shorter. On the 23rd, we have Sister Neva Ford. Happy birthday, members. Amen. 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 couple of more announcements they will come to you as well as an infomercial you all have a great week Amen. okay let's be in prayer uh, she said Brother Curry is back in the hospital, so let's be in prayer for Brother Turner Curry. He's at St. Dominic. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You, have may, you may have noticed that as you enter to the building that there are some cameras out. We just want to make you aware that uh, of that. And, these cameras are part of a project that we started just over a year ago with the uh, Department of Homeland Security. And, we, and, and the camera were phase one. We had three phases. Phase one was the installation of the camera, and we, and we completed that this week. Uh, we just want to make you aware that we are being recorded. Uh, all the ex, uh, exterior perimeter, uh, perimeters and, the, and the inside of the building where people congregate uh, are recorded. This is 24-7. Um, and we just want to make you aware of the uh, project. And yeah. the next phase of the project will be uh, lighting. You'll have to come by at night time to see that. But we're going to upgrade our lighting on, on, the, on the outside of the parking lot. 
Now that's going to not only serve as a, as a security measure, but it's also going to allow us to reduce our electric bill uh, because we right now we are, we're leasing some of the lights, so we'll be able to purchase our own lights, and, and so that expense will not have to, uh, we, will not, we will not have to incur. And phase three of the project uh, deals with exterior doors. That'll be the last thing that we'll do. We plan on replacing all the exterior doors and some of the interior doors as well. So, so we're excited about this project, and it, again, I just want to make you aware. And if you'd like to participate, uh, maybe assist with the surveillance, we're gonna have someone in the, uh, in a, in the control room in the back that would be able to monitor all the activities uh, that are going on here. That's and so right. we're going to need someone to, to be back. And we are trained. So if you're interested, interested in, in helping out with that, please let us know. Thank you. All right. We have one more announcement today. But before that, uh, I'd like for everyone in church just to join me in giving Brother Cross uh, a hand. Amen. Uh, And I say that because he's lended, he's given, constantly giving uh, his talents to this church. Uh, the Homeland Security grant that he mentioned uh, is a fruit of his efforts in terms of grant writing. So he put together a proposal uh, for this church. And we were approved, uh, I believe, for nearly $200,000 uh, worth of improvements. Uh, that have already that are started. So once again, thank you, Brother Cross, for uh, all that you do for the uh, church. Uh, the additional announcement that uh, that uh, I wanted to share with you is is really for uh, next Sunday, uh, and it, it, it's a call to members, particularly members that have uh, a background and expertise in the field of social work, uh, the medical field, uh, finance and education, right? So if you're a member here and you have, have a background uh, in, in those areas, what we're trying to do is really uh, kind of get a little bit more organized with our efforts to uh, assist and aid in the community. Uh, and just to give you a little background of where this, com com this is coming from, um, you know, over the la last couple, couple of years, you know, a lot has been going on in Jackson and in the surrounding community and all that. And, you know, we've seen uh, a lot of people come to the church with needs, uh, with various, various needs. And, you know, we've done the best we could in order to address them uh, as a church with the resources that we have. Amen. What we're trying to do now is get a little bit more organized uh, so we will be able to more effectively uh, handle and address the needs that may arise to us. Just for, for example, one day, uh, Brother, Brother Fizer and I were just sitting in the parking lot. We were leaving out of a... Uh, a finance meeting or whatever, and someone came, drove through the parking lot, they just, you know, uh, been battered and, you know, and were in need uh, of some support. You know, so yeah, we were able to offer prayer, get the hotel room, that type of stuff, get them the opportunity to talk with the pastor. Amen. But again, what more could we have done? What more resources could we have been able to connect people too. So again, this is again, this is just an effort about us being able to get better prepared to meet community needs. And uh, we need those of you that have special expertise to join us in this planning process as we move forward. So Amen. meeting next Sunday, short brief meeting right after church. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. Read you at Restoration Conference 2022. Proverbs 3-6 Ministries Restoration Conference is a free one-day event for youth, young adults, and their parents. Featuring Dave and Big Ben, Benjamin Cohn III in worship, Evangelist Cynthia Hill, and Zacchaeus Clerk. Restoration Conference is Saturday, July 30th at Jackson State University's Rosie McCoy Auditorium. Registration begins at 8 a.m. Pre-register at eventbrite.com. Minor 17 and under must be accompanied by a parent or guardian during the event. Wear your
Won't he do it? Yes, he will. If your soul don't look back and wonder how he brought you through, then I don't know. You better go back and check yourself. You got to just tell him, thank you. See, there it is again. You got to tell him. Tell him, thank you. And when you tell him, mean it from the depth of your heart. Mean it from the depth of your soul. Just tell him. That's all he wants. Now it's time for our tithes and offering. 10% of what the Lord has blessed you with. Here at Black Chapel, we have multiple ways of giving. You can give online through Givelify. You can come through any day of the week to the west end of the church and drop it off in our drop box. Or you can give right here in church in service. At this time, we're going to turn everything over to our ushers.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this offering that was just taken. We certainly thank you for the ones that have given. They've given with a cheerful heart as you love a cheerful giver. And Father, we pray that you would just bless this offering. And Father, for which it was taken, we know you're going to multiply it and you're going to bless it. And Father, those that are on our sick and our shut-in list, we lift them up. And we also lift up Sister Rosie Hobson, Evangelist Hill's mother. At this time, Father, we pray your loving, your mercy, and your grace upon her. We pray for Brother Curry, Lord God, who's in the hospital as well. And we pray that you would just bless those that are on our sick and our shut-in list here and those that are abroad that we don't know but you know, Lord. Bless them and keep them, Lord God, and strengthen them. Those that are incarcerated physically, spiritually, and mentally, we lift them up as well. And Father, the bereaved at this time, we lift up. We pray your spirit of peace upon them, Lord God, that surpasses all understanding. For this, Father, we praise your name and we give you the glory, the praise, and all the honor. And Father, in Jesus' name we ask, amen and amen. All things. to the Lord. Amen. Blessed be unto the Lord. This is another day that our God has made. And we are indeed to rejoice and be glad in it. Just another reason. I use the word just. It sounds so casual but just another reason the God that we serve is so blessing until his blessings become casual to us every day every hour, every minute and every second of our lives our God just keep right on blessing us because Every day, every hour, and every second that we experience in life is a gift from God. Is another blessing. And when the choir stated in the lyrics of their song, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we should give more thought to that word, thanks. It has become a casual word that we so casually speak when we speak it in reference to God. Lord, I thank you. But when we think about the meaning of the word, thanks, thank you. It is letting God know that we are conscious of something that he has done for us. You know, it's not just a word that's a part of our vocabulary. When we speak it toward God, we're letting him know something he already knows. But we are speaking it off our own lips. Lord, I am aware of how blessed you are toward me. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. You know how good it makes you feel when you assist someone in a certain way and they show gratitude. You may already know up front that they'll never be able to repay you for that in which you are on the verge of doing for them. But after you commit yourself to doing it, they come back in the spirit of gratitude 
and you can sense and you can feel the gratitude that they have toward you, how appreciative they have been. They are for what you have done. That's more than, that's more than payback. That, that, that has a greater worth in giving back to you what you gave unto them. And when we say, Lord, I thank you, we should just reflect back upon all the reasons why we are giving thanks unto God. And I know our minds cannot even carry us back to that clarity of remembering just how blessed we are. Every day, every hour, every minute, every second. God blesses us with it. It's not ours to claim. Give no thought for tomorrow because it's not promised. Not tomorrow, but not the next minute, the next second. Our God is a right now God. And he does business with us in the right now. Because there would not be a right now if God did not grant it. We've been gone. It would not have been a right now. We would have been gone because we're being kept, maintained, and sustained only by the Lord, by his grace and by his mercy. And I just thank this choir once again. Let's give them a round of applause for just leading us into that thought. I just want to say thank you. I want you to know, Lord, something you already know, and that is that I am conscious of all that you've done and that in which you're doing for me. We're getting ready now to hear the preached word of God. Another reason why we should give thanks, and that is because God is still communicating with us. He is still speaking to us. And he is still using us as vessels to work such a work mm -hmm. as in communicating his word unto us. The man of God who's going to stand and proclaim the good news of the gospel this morning is no stranger to any of us. He's one of our own, Amen. homegrown. Yes. And I just thank God for blessing him the way that he's blessed him because he has truly been a blessing to me. Yes. And it all began with him being blessed Amen. by the Lord. And this man is none other than Reverend James Cole, one of our very own, a great man of God, a man who wears many hats and wears them well, starting with a man of God, a minister of the gospel, a husband, a father, a son, a brother, and the list just goes on and on. And from my observation of him, he has truly worked all of those offices. I believe to the best of his ability. And all God requires of us is our best. Regardless of what measure that best may measure up to be in, it's still your best. And God is one who deserves it each and every time we practice the use of the faculties in which he's blessed us with. And I would just like for you to welcome this man to the podium by the elevation of your right hand and repeating after me, Reverend Cole, Reverend Reverend Cole. We, love you. we love you. We thank God for you. Thank God for you. We're blessed to have you, to have you. As, one as one of our own. And we are going to be tentative, we are going to, be tentative. To, the word of God. to the word of God as you proclaim, as you proclaim the, good the good news of the gospel. Of the gospel. God bless you. The thank next voice that you will hear is immediately following our song of inspiration will be that of our speaker for this morning's worship service, Reverend James Cole. Amen.
What a beautiful song. For God so loved the world. He so loved the world. And that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Oh, what a beautiful word. And we thank God. You know, I asked God. As I was preparing and coming here today, that he would take me back. Mm -hmm. When I first felt the power of his Holy Spirit, yes, uh, a calm came over me. Yes, and ever since then, he's been working a work in my life. Hallelujah. And I thank him for it. Yes. And I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that he was born of the Virgin Mary. Yes, sir. I believe that he had a ministry here. Yes, sir. I believe that he was crucified. Yes, I believe that he died on the cross. Yes, sir. And I believe that God raised him from the dead. Yes, <laughs> With all power. All power. One of the songs that I it's so dear to my heart is that it could have been me. It could have been me. I don't care if I hear that in a choir or instrumental. It just does something to me. It, it, it could have been me with no shoes on my feet. It could have been me with no place to stay. It could have been me. Do y'all know how good God is? I want to tell you he's a good God. I want to tell you that he brought all of us from a mighty long ways. I want to tell you that he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. I want to tell you that he's going to always be with us. I'm going to try not to hold you too long because I want you to go out, the believers now, and tell men, women, boys, and girls that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't leave that out. To them that believe. <laughs> to them that believe. And so I thank him now. You know he tells us in his word that when we come to his house that we should make a joyful noise. And I believe that when you're joyful that you have gratitude. You got smiles on your face. You ain't angry about nothing. And you let all that foolishness go that's been riding your back all week. Now, now some of y'all ain't smiled since you've been in here. So, 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 so I want to tell you that release this foolishness and hear what the word of God has to say. Because he's a good God. And he set this thing in place for us. Yes, he, he didn't say that it's going to be all good. Right. He didn't say all oh, y'all are going to be rich with money and all this. <laughs> and all this fancy stuff that y'all see out here. All these distractions and carrying on. He didn't say nothing about all that. Because yes, he didn't come into the world to condemn the world. But he came in the world that the world might be saved. And he didn't save me. And I believe he didn't save you. Because first thing you've done is you're obedient to him because you have not forsake yourselves of assembly. As such as the men of some are. And so we thank God for everyone who has come out this morning to worship him now in spirit and in truth.
and we thank him that you will pray along with us now as we give you a little scripture and we talk just a little bit about how good God is and that God cares for us all. Um, if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like for you to stand uh, and uh, before you stand, go ahead and get your Bibles turned to the book of First Peter, the fifth chapter, and I, won't, I was led to I was led to the seventh verse through the eleventh verse. That's the book of First Peter, the fifth chapter, Deacon Ross, and the seventh through the eleventh verse. Once you found that, please stand for the reading of God's word. Once you found that passage of scripture, let the church say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. It reads as follows. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober. Be, be, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, that after ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthened, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 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 Blessed be unto the Lord. Amen. That's a beautiful word. Yes, I want to talk a little bit about the fact that Jesus cares. Yes, he, does. he cares about us. And I want to, just for a little clarity, I want to read this passage of scripture in the New International Version also. For you're here, and he says that in the New International Version of this scriptural text, it says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert. And of sober mind, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. I'm going to stop right there. You ain't the only one that got some problems. You ain't the only one whose children is disobedient. You ain't the only one who having a problem with your spouse. You ain't the only one whose bank account ain't enough. You ain't the only one that has problem in your ministry. Your brethren throughout the world going through the same thing. But the Lord sees us through them all. To them that believe. He said, he that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Yes, sir. The Spirit is telling you today that Jesus cares. He cares about what you're going through. Yes. He cares about the sin that you commit. Yes. He cares about you moving forward in him. Yes, sir. There was an introduction in the Sunday school lesson this morning that says that Missed opportunities oftentimes hamper our progress because we think about what we could have done, what we should have done. But don't you know God is in control of everything that you think you should have done or you think you could have done? That he gives you a mind to do the things that you desire to do? He says that Whoever delight themselves yes, sir. in him, he'll give you 
the desires of your heart. And there's going to be a struggle. But he says that he got you. He's not going to leave you. And he's not going to forsake you. He'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind staying on him. I'm not talking about staying on the news. I'm not talking about what you hear and what you go, what's going on with us in, in the world. Because we're in the world, but we're not of the world. I hope I'm talking to believers now. Because everybody in here that go to church ain't no Christian. See, Satan up in here too. For he said in his word that when the sons of God met, God asked Satan, what are you doing up here? And Satan says, oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just seeking to and fro. I'm just checking y'all out. <laughs> he checking us out too. And then God asked him, have you considered? So you may be being considered. But the word of God tells us that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ain't the only one that got somebody in the hospital. You're not the only one that just lost someone to death. You're not the only one who car just broke down. You're not the only one. We all go through that. But God is a good God. And he cares for us. And he'll make a way for us. All you got to do is believe. Have faith. Pray, have faith, and believe. And what is faith? The substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. If you can see it, it ain't faith. If you already got it, it ain't faith. Because you can see it. Because he said faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, yeah, we have, to, we have to see things. Some of us are like Thomas. We don't believe nothing unless we see it. But God says, blessed is the one that believe it and not see it. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his word. We thank him for his word. Because he got a good word for us. And we need to be telling men, women, boys, and girls once again that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. To them that believe. You see, you have to believe this. You have to believe that Jesus was born by the Virgin Mary. You can't figure this out with your weak mind. You too smart. Your mind is too weak, but you you real smart. Amen. But you weak. Yes, sir. I'm so thankful that God didn't tell us everything. I was at Pastor and I was just talking. I was talking to my wife, and my wife was telling me, she said, you know, we we in the we in the we in the fourth quarter. I said, I don't know about that. I said that you know we might be in the two minute warning. You don't know what quarter you in in your life. Uh, right now, it, 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 you know, we're we Roe versus Wade, politicians taken from the poor people, given to the rich people. All kinds of things are going on. But he said, look at here. I got y'all now. Don't y'all be too concerned about that. They're going to do this thing now. This is what they do. This is what Satan does. Yeah, he ain't got nothing for you. Yes, sir. And so then you need to keep your mind stayed on what Jesus Christ is saying. Yes, sir. And he's telling you that he got you. He got you in eternal. He got you for eternal. He said he say, eternal life. We just passing through here. It might be the first, second, third, or fourth quarter in your life. You don't know that. You don't know when God going to call your name. This might be your last date. 
So you got to get your business straight. We all got to get our business straight. We got to keep our business straight. We're too concerned about what's going on in the world. But God loved the world. He so loved the world. And we need to thank him for our Savior, Jesus Christ. But you can't get to God unless you go through his son. You must receive the son. See, you got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are one. He sent his son that whosoever believe it on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm talking about everlasting life. I'm not talking about living 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years and be dead and be through. I'm talking about eternal life. We talk about it. Don't you want you want to live in hell all your life and then wind up in hell? No, sir. No, sir. I told this to the Sunday school this morning. I saw a caption of a minister in another country. And he stood up before his congregation. I don't know where he was in his delivery or in his message but he told him he said write this down he all get a pen and write this down he said that uh, if you make it to heaven and you don't see me you done made it to hell Y'all know me by now. <laughs> this is serious business. But God, he has to have a sense of humor. Because I laugh at a lot of things that I see, I read about, and I hear about, and I see. It makes me, it makes me joyful. It makes me, it makes me happy to know that God's word is true. I'm not going to hold you too long. I want to close with a story that I found. And I want to just... Let you listen to it real closely. Uh -huh. Back in the mid 1800s, there was a man who had a major need in his life. Mm -hmm. So he decided to go to the White House and set his problem before Abraham Lincoln, yes, who was the president of the United States at that time. But he soon discovered that it was very difficult to get access to President Lincoln, for Lincoln was a very, very busy man. In despair, the man plopped down on one of the park benches outside the White House, mm -hmm. placed his head in his hands, mm -hmm. and began to weep. He lost all hope of getting to see the president. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, a little boy wandered up. Mm -hmm. A little boy wandered up to him and asked him, said, uh, what, what, what's wrong, sir? And he told the little boy that he had a big problem mm -hmm. that only the president could solve. His voice shook mm -hmm. as he said, they won't let me in to see the president. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when the little boy took him by the hand mm -hmm. and he asked him to come with me. Mm -hmm. Together they stood up and they walk past the guards uh -huh. they walk past the barriers yes, sir. they pass the inner guards yes. and they walk straight into the over office yes, uh -huh. and the boy said dad this man want to talk to you <laughs> president lincoln turned to the man and gave him full attention. Good God Almighty. In the same way, we got to go through the sun to get to the Father to do this thing for us. Whatever problem we got, whatever 
situation we going through, we got to go to the Son before we can get to the Father. The Father is the one. You can't get to the Father unless you go to the Son. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Good God Almighty. Don't you want to know who he is? Don't you want a savior like that? Jesus, the son of God. We need him. I told you I'm not going to hold you long. Because I want you to go out. If you're a believer now, you need to go out and tell men, women, boys, and girls that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to them that believe. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. The doors of the church are open. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It could have been me. It could have been me that had not accepted you, oh God. It could have been me. I want to thank you right now. I want to thank you for everybody is here. We're going to continue to play, pray blessings over all of you. We're going to rebuke the devil who's trying to come up against all of our people. It's time out. And it's time in for us to move forward in Christ. Bless his holy name. My letter, Christian experience, or as a candidate to be baptized. The pastor will accept you in. I'm going to say this to you too. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just believe. Admit that you are a sinner. Believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And then make a commitment to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He'll make that thing right for you. He'll begin to work in you. Just like he's working on all of us. We thank him right now. May God bless you. The door of the church is still open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open. If you're here this morning, and when you came into this sanctuary, you knew not the Lord in the pardon of your sin. But something has been said or something has been done throughout the activity of this worship service. It doesn't matter who said it, nor what was said. But it opened your mind and your understanding to the realization that there is a God in heaven. And that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And in order to return back unto the Father from which you came, you must accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And the man of God has come and he has spoken the word of truth. Your ears have heard what the Spirit had to say unto the church. And it's all about God's saving grace. All about his mercy. That he communicated unto us through his only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The atmosphere has been made perfect for you to walk out of the world of darkness and into the marvelous light which is found in Christ Jesus. There may be someone in our presence who know the Lord in the pardon of their sins, have already become saved, sanctified, and filled with God's precious Holy Spirit. 
But for whatever reason, you are without an immediate church home, a place that you can call your church home, your place of worship. And God has instituted such places all over this world, almost on every street corner, there's a house of prayer. Meaning that God has left no stone unturned. And he's made such preparation for you so that you will be without excuse because God does not want his sheep wandering. This father that we serve and we have is not a deadbeat father. He has already made arrangements and provisions in this earth for us to be cared for. As a man of God say, Jesus cares. We open the door of this sanctuary, of this ministry, here at Black Chapel unto you. If you're here, will you come? By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism, the door of the church is open. The man of God has proclaimed and declared the truth of God. And the word of God tells us that to know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It's liberation time. If you are under any sense of bondage, regardless of what it may be related to, the man of God told us in his subject, cast your cares on him because Jesus cares yes he does and this is the moment for you to work such a work in your life by surrendering all unto him the door of the church is open will you come will you come We thank God for the man of God. We thank God for the word of God. We thank God for the witnesses who have been a witness to the good news of the gospel. And we know that God's word will not go out and return back unto him void, but that it is going to accomplish that which pleases God. And since his word has gone out, when it's time for you to go out, you should leave this sanctuary pleased because something has been said or something has been done in this sanctuary that should usher in that pleasing spirit upon your mind, your heart, and your soul. Jesus said that if you don't believe my words, then believe me for my work's sake. You already know what he has already done, and he's not through doing yet. At this time, we're going to have special prayer. Amen. For another precious gift and privilege that he has blessed and saved with. Word of God teaches us that God hears not a sinner's prayer. So if you know not the Lord in the pardon of your sin, that is one benefit that you lack. And that is the privilege of prayer. If we had a thousand tongues and lived a thousand years, we could not name all the privileges that comes along with except in Jesus as Lord and Savior. And one of those is prayer. And the word of God teaches us that if we pray, have faith, and believe, that whatsoever we ask in his name, believe it, and we shall receive it. What a privilege. Let us bow our heads and humble our hearts as we approach the throne of grace through prayer. Once again, our most gracious and eternal Father, we come exercising one of the privileges that comes along with accepting Jesus, your son, as Lord and Savior. The privilege of being able to bow our heads and humble our hearts and beseech the throne of grace. We come, Lord God, first of all, saying, Lord, we thank you because we recognize all that you've already done in all of our lives. Already, you have been better to us than if we lived a thousand years that we could ever come to unto our Savior. We know these things, Lord God. 
And we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your long suffering because you had to wait each of us out. Didn't have to do it, but you did. Because while we were sinners, you could have slipped us out of here into a world of eternal damnation. But because of your long suffering, Lord God, you tolerated us. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you. And these mothers who come, Lord God, petitioning the throne of grace, we pray, Lord God, that you give ear to their requests. Give ear to their desires. And Father, continue to just be in God. And that is a God who take care of his people. That is a God who come and see about his children. As David said, when I called, he answers. We thank you in advance for answering in their prayers, Lord God. We know that our answers may not always come by way of our desires. But whichever way you bless us, Lord God, is always sufficient. That's what Paul said when Paul said, your grace is sufficient enough for thee. And your strength is made perfect in our weakness. So Father, we thank you in advance. We thank you for, in advance for communicating their requests in the way, shape, form, and fashion in which you're going to communicate it unto them. Lord, we thank you. We thank them, Lord God, for having the faith in you to be able to be willing to humble their hearts and bow their heads and make their petitions known unto you by just standing and coming forth. Father, all of those who are in this sanctuary, where all of us are in need of a presence, of your love, of your mercy, of your grace. All of us have petitions, Lord God. Because as the men of God say, the enemy is like a roaring lion, traveling to and fro throughout the earth, seeking whom he may devour. And all of us are being bit. All of us are being clawed. All of us are being yawed on by the enemy. But yet and still, yet and still, Lord, you say that if we resist him, then he will flee. And the way that you have given us to go about resisting him is like you told his son, and his son told him, it is written, Man shall not live by alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. It is because of your word, it's because of promises that you made unto us, Lord God, that we can claim our rights in the body of Christ and say, go away, flee. And he has to leave. We thank you for your word. We thank you for that word that you say will not go out and return back to you poor, but it is going to accomplish that which pleases you. And you also told us in that same word that what pleases you both toward us, your children, is that we be of good health, sound mind, and prosper. So, Lord God, those three areas, three and three are numbers of completion. In blessing us in those three areas, Lord, you bless us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. When you look in on us in those ways, and we thank you, Lord God, for the look. We thank you for the blessing. We thank you for those who believe in prayer. Those who have already witnessed the power of prayer. And Father, you said man should always pray and faint not. Not just when we understand of a need, but Lord God, just because your ears are always open. And what a blessing it is just to communicate with the Lord. What a blessing it is just to be able to say, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your long suffering. Thank you for waking us up this morning and closing us in our right mind. Thank you for the food you played us on our table, the clothes on our back, the roof over our head. Thank you. What a blessing it is to be able to say such to one who's done it all for us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We recognize, we acknowledge it, that you're God. And besides you, there is none of us. That is why we say thank you, Lord. Thank you. And as we depart from this prayer, we depart with that blessed assurance, knowing that it's done. It is done. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give thanks. Amen, amen, amen. It's done. Go and pray.
the Lord. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Uh, we thank God this morning for the man of God, Reverend Cole, for coming and blessing our heart through the spoken word of God. Amen. Let us continue to remind ourselves of those words of truth that he shared with us today. Yeah. That we serve a God that has a son who cares about us. Amen. The bridge that connects us with the Father. What a blessed people we are indeed in all of our comings and in all of our goings, knowing that we have a Jesus, ears are always open, who are waiting for us to cast whatever care that we may experience while doing this pilgrimage through this earth upon him. We thank God for all of you who came out to be a part of our worship service, our visitors, for sharing with the Black Shepherd Church family this morning, for all of our members. We just thank you for your steadfastness. It is such a blessing and it is such an, an honor to be able to stand before this podium on Sunday morning and look out there and see your happy faces. Because just being in this place, just being in the Lord's house, it's a spirit of happiness that automatically comes upon us. Amen. I don't care how you take that little half moon and turn it upside down or right side up. You can't change God's spirit that kind of way. Just coming into the sanctuary, you can't help but to be blessed and happy. And each and every Sunday morning when I look across this portal, I see happy spirits. I see happy people. And that, makes, that, in, that, that adds to my happiness. And I thank you for all that you've done and what you do. Thank you for last week, the way you honored myself and my family. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful celebration. I love you and I thank God for you. And we let us just continue to just keep our bereaved lifted up in prayer. Upon yesterday, Sister Mother Walker, one of our mothers, eulogized her brother on yesterday and what a beautiful home going ceremony it was indeed the life that you live will someday speak for you not just before God but also before man so let us be cautious and conscious of every act every word every word that we speak and commit in this body while we walk through this earth and also I would just like to echo very briefly upon a statement that brother Cross made about our, 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 our cameras that we have the Lord has blessed us with. I want you to know up front, and, and, and I, I spoke with Brother Cross and, and Brother Deacon Latica about making sure that they inform you that whenever you pull on this parking lot, all right, yeah. I just want you to know, and, 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 and it, it has already uh, 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 helped me in being conscious and cautious of every word that I speak Amen. and every act that I commit on these holy grounds. Because it's being filmed. When you drive up on that parking lot, if you roll down your window yes, and throw out a little piece of paper, All right, now. Make a if you get in a conversation outside of these four walls, every word that you speak. Better stop the gospel. I'm not saying that to deter you from coming to church. I'm saying that so the best of us will always come out of us when we're on these sacred grounds. That's the reason. I want you to be aware that everything is being recorded, and, and, and it's a blessing. It's a blessing on the security end. It's a blessing on keeping us sharp, spiritually sharp, with our worries, with our acts, and, and our doings, and our comings and our goings. God has ways and means to go by increasing our spirituality. Yes, he does. We're not a finished product yet. And that is just one of the ways in letting us know, which are always so, God's eyes are always on us. But sometimes we seem to care more about what people see, what people hear, than that of God. But I want, now I want you to know that people see you and people hear you. Not just God, but the saints of God. And we thank God, and once again, I just commend Deacon Cross for being steadfast. This is a work that he's been working on for years. He never surrendered. He never waved the white rag. He never threw in the towel. He continued to work. He continued to do and submit. He continued to stay on the wall until the Lord blessed him. And in blessing him with his effort, the ministry was blessed. And I just want to thank Deacon Cross once again for his steadfastness and seeing it through. And what a blessing it is that all of us are reaping from his works. Amen. At this time, we're going to have Reverend Cole to come back with his final remarks and benediction. Amen. 
Amen. I want to thank God again for all that he's done and uh, how he used me today. Uh, I've already gotten some uh, comments. I was looking there and my sister in Washington, D.C. says she was jumping and shouting and it blessed her. And so I just thank God for all he's done. And uh, I just thank God for you all having me as a member here at the Black Chapel Baptist Church. Uh, I, I've seen how we've grown and uh, how we are continuing to grow. And uh, all we have to do is stand on the word of God and keep Jesus Christ out front. And he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And thank you for all the ones who stayed uh, to hear the benediction. And just want to plug once again the Proverbs 3, 6 Ministries is hosting a restoration uh, 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 conference over at the, uh, it used to be the College Park when I was a little boy. But they call it the Rose E. McCoy Amen. Auditorium now. And you can register at eventbrite.com. This is going to be a conference not limited to uh, young adults and women and children and men, but it's for everybody. Amen. And we believe that Jesus Christ has led this ministry to uh, sponsor this restoration conference at the Rosie McCoy Auditorium. And we uh, just ask you to pray along with us Amen. as we continue to push the word of God forward, that we tell men, women, boys, and girls that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to them that believe. Let us stand for our final song and benediction. Remember that Jesus cares. <laughs> One other thing before we go, one other thing before we go. I want to lift up the Gordon family in the passing of Brother Craig Gordon, a longtime coach of Jackson State University's football team. One of his sons passed away, played ball with us when we were little boys. We want to lift up Miss Gordon and all the Gordon family at this time. Let's keep them in prayer also. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us until we meet again. Let us all say.